A man returns to live in his childhood home and finds it's not the place it used to be. He and his new tenants are terrorized by evil spirits and demonic forces. Paranormal investigators must come up with an answer before it's too late. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Mark Corvo is no ordinary child. He often sleepwalks and has a rare talent, but doesn't realize it yet, and won't until decades later. Mark is an empath able to sense the presence of spirits. He experiences vivid dreams. But are they all too real? Mark, are you down there? In 2011, Mark Corville returns to Cromwell, Connecticut as the new owner of his childhood home. In spite of his sleepwalking, which stopped as he grew older, Mark retains fond memories of his youth and family life in the 18th century house. It's a old colonial in a very nice part of town, one of a kind. Being Italian, we'd have family over, and there's always good food and good eats. It really was a lot of fun to grow up there, and everybody loved each other. It was a great place. Mark's newfound happiness is tinged with sadness. He acquired the house after his parents died, one soon after the other. Mark recognizes that for him, it will always be a special place. From when I was small, I always had the ability to sense different things that were going on. But as you grow up, you get involved, and I sort of put it on the back shelf and ignored it. Mark plans to take in tenants, but first, there's a lot of repainting to take care of. It needed a lot of cosmetic work. The house is old, and it does have a tendency to creak and moan. I thought I heard footsteps. It was startling. I thought maybe somebody was playing a joke on me. There was nobody there. I didn't know what to think, and I was tired, so I just went to bed, and that was it. Well, this is it. This will be your room. Nice. After a month of renovating, Mark welcomes his first potential tenant, Sean Angus, a local firefighter. I'm trying to restore this place to its Form of glory. I'll take it. I was ready to move out of my mother's house. I uh, was looking for a place to rent. I loved the location. It was right up the street from the firehouse, so I decided to move in.
Trammell's a small town, like a little village. And I knew that in a very short period of time, I'd be able to rent that side of the house out. Ashley Singer has just moved to the area. Hey, you had a room advertised? Right, I have a room for rent, correct. Would you like to see it? Yeah. yeah. Follow me. Ashley considers herself a spiritual person and senses a presence. Ashley, this way. OK, thanks. Ashley's a very interesting and eclectic person. And I knew she would appreciate the history of the house. With two tenants now in place, Mark's never-ending restoration work continues. Need a hand? Sure, that'd be great. And volunteers are welcome. I got to get a nail. Just a second. Set it down for a minute. That's an old well. It's been there forever. I bet. Yeah, how deep do you suppose it goes? It's deep. The well was built at the time of the house in 1741 and was long abandoned before Mark grew up here. He's rarely given it a second thought since he was a child. It's the blessing and curse of living in a 200-year-old home, the hissing of the pipes, the miscellaneous bangs. Mark isn't the only one hearing strange noises at night. Sean told me you know, there's a lot of noises and things going on, and I just attributed it to pipes. He understood and eventually got used to it. Ashley believes there could be another reason for those strange noises. She senses the house is haunted and studies the spiritual world. tell me that there was a lot of activity, that she had seen this or had seen that, or something else was happening. I didn't minimize it, but I didn't really give it the full credence that I probably should have. A few weeks later. And I smelled smoke. Smoke was coming from Ashley's room. Oh my God, is the house on fire? into the house he grew up in. 
where a mysterious well and vivid dreams colored his childhood. Recently, he's encountered unexplained events and strange noises. And now, one of his tenants appears to be trapped in her burning room. Ashley, are you in there? Ashley! Ashley! We gotta get out of here! Fuck! She seemed to be in a trance in a world of her own. Invades my sacred place. I banish you away. She was holding a pile of twigs, and all the smoke was coming from there. You have or hold no power here. This is I realized she must be performing some kind of ritual. To me, it was completely alien and strange what she was doing. Ashley! Ashley! Sorry, I was just smudging the room. What? Yeah, it's, it's sage. It's for spiritual cleansing. Look, I've always been a spiritual person. Some people have even called me a white witch. A witch? There are malevolent forces in your house. She told me there are spirits in the house that need to be cleansed. Well, just be careful. Don't burn the house down. Mark, I'm sorry, I should have warned you. Despite what's happened, Mark retains a soft spot for his unusual tenant. As long as she didn't start the house on fire and paid her rent on time, what she did in the privacy of her rental apartment was fine by me. Mark, I'm taking a trip to New Orleans and I told a friend she could stay at my place while I was away. That's fine. A few days later. You must be... Sadra, Ashley's friend. Let me take that for you. Oh, thank you. This way. house, she drifts off to sleep. the home in search of safety. But she returns one last time to confront Mark. I don't know what kind of scam you've got going. Sorry, I don't know what... Save it! Are. I'm out of here. Tell Ash I'm not sticking around. And that was the end of Sadra. Last I saw of her. Now my antennas are up. I'm starting to get alarmed at what's going on. When you rent a house out, your uppermost thought in your mind is that everybody is safe and protected. The way she ran out of that house was just uh, very, very strange and alarming. Mark's tenant, Ashley, who claims she's a white witch, returns from her trip to New Orleans with some new friends. I could tell she seemed different. You okay? Fine. She seemed a little darker than she had been when she left. She was my tenant, and I respected her right to have guests, but I just didn't feel right about them being in the house. Ashley's friends are originally from Haiti. Mark has no idea that they are in the attic 
practicing the witchcraft of their homeland. All right, quit it. It's time to start. They're performing a voodoo ritual to try and make contact with the spirits Ashley believes are in the house. As Ashley grows more intense, she gives Mark an ominous warning. They had blessed the house with voodoo, and if I ever sold the house, and ever left the family, I would die. Ashley. She was very nervous and easily spooked. Uh, we need you inside for the next part. I'm fine. The mysterious Haitians soon leave. But now the white witch wishes she hadn't dabbled with the spirits and is convinced they're evil and after her own soul. She was smudging the house on a daily basis. Ashley! Ashley is desperate to try to cleanse the house in any way she can, but she's convinced the spirits are growing stronger. Ashley! She told me it's just too intense. The spirits are here. Ashley spends hours alone in the house, terrorized and tormented by the evil presence. Yeah! It's hard to see somebody be in that kind of distress and turmoil. That's it. That's it. I can't live here anymore. Ashley, talk to me. Just no! To me. You don't understand! She just couldn't tolerate the intensity of what she perceived was coming at her from the house. She was frightened. She was truly frightened. Abruptly, Ashley disappears. She just took off and left her stuff, even. That's how adversely impacted she was by what she perceived was going on in the house. I was really upset, angry, plus concerned, I mean, was it the house? Was it that apartment? Living in a place like that, which you really love, then all of a sudden you find out, oh my God, you know, what's going on here? With Ashley gone, only Sean and his new girlfriend, Jessica, remain in the house with Mark. that dates back to the 1700s in Cromwell, Connecticut. Spirits are terrorizing tenants and visitors. Two have been compelled to leave. Now Jessica, the girlfriend of Sean Angus, has become the target of something menacing. I didn't know what was gonna happen to me next, what was gonna happen in that room. I was terrified.
What what's going on? What what the hell? There was this thing and it, it, it was coming it was okay. coming in the bed and there was this thing like a white a white sheet that was over the bed and it was well, You're was dreaming. Coming. No, I wasn't. I tried to wake you and you wouldn't wake okay. up. Okay, well just okay, just come and she try. kept saying repeatedly, I have to get out out of here. I have to get out of here. I, no, I can't I'm sorry, I, I can't. I'll I'll call you. Told Sean I love you, got in my car and didn't look back. What? Did you The next day, I told Sean I can never stay in the house ever again. Mark is stunned when he hears of this latest night of horror. I felt angry. I felt concerned. I felt troubled. What is going on? Gonna miss you guys. Wish there was another way. Sean said, Listen, I have Sorry. to find some place else to live. Uh, Jessica's not really comfortable here, given the experience that she had. He was quite surprised that we needed to move out, but wasn't surprised that we actually saw something. It's almost like he knew there was something in the house. Mark feels compelled to act, launching his own paranormal investigation, aided by tips and guidance from books, TV shows, and the internet. I've always been a person of action. I didn't want to have new tenants come in if there was going to be some situation. I developed a plan based on EVPs or electronic voice phenomena Who are you? Who are you? When I say away, away. I came upon what looked like a place of sacrifice or a, a very ritualistic altar with a dead bird, carcass, a cross, and an empty bottle. If this was voodoo, I mean, what was my house turned into? Day and night, Mark wanders his home in the hope of making contact with the spirits that have brought so much misery and fear. Who are you? Why are you here? What do you want? That, for me, was the moment where I realized that my house was haunted. What do you want? I knew that I was in serious trouble. For more A Haunting, go to DestinationAmerica.com. After months of terrifying paranormal encounters, who are you? Why are you here? Mark Corvo has managed what? to capture EVP recordings of the voices of spirits in his 270-year-old home. But now, an evil presence has made itself known and issued a direct threat to his life. I knew now I needed some help, professional help. Mark contacts Goners, the ghosts of New England Research Society. Goners, this is Kurt Knapp. Kurt is a former police officer who's been a paranormal investigator for more than two decades. When Mark Corbel first called me, he sounded kind of stressed out about the situation he was facing. Well, how long have you been living in the house? Goners' primary mission is to determine, first of all, if a haunting is genuine, and if it is, 
to determine how we can best help the people in the house. Thank you, Mr. Corvo. Let me get you a cup of coffee here first. That uh, sounds good. So, Mark, what's been going on in the house? Well, I tell you, I had a couple of tenants. They had to move out from everything that's been going on, all the noises. The, poor Ashley, she ran out of here screaming. They found in police work that after an hour or so, a person will start to change their story if they're lying to you. Well, there was none of that with Mark. He was as genuine in the end as he was in the beginning. Now I'm starting to hear a few things myself. I did some preliminary research on the property. I got a few things I want to show you. We found out that the house was built in 1741 by a sea captain who was active in the slave trade in the West Indies. And we do know for a fact that he kept slaves on the property. That might be the reason I've captured so many uh, EVPs. You have EVPs? Yeah, I've got some recordings. I'd love to hear them. I was able to identify about six separate voices in the EVPs he played for me. And I knew immediately that we had to investigate this property. Where did you record these? Throughout the house. It put an end to any speculation on my part that I was either seeing things or hearing things. <laughs> I was kind of concerned about him, too. Kurt Knapp and his paranormal investigation team arrive, armed with an array of high-tech ghost hunting equipment. Patrick, there's a lot of EVP activity around here, so make sure the recorders are set to go, please. On the investigation, I decided to bring Karen Hollis, our resident psychic. I was immediately struck by how heavy the energy was in the home. Melanie, who is in charge of evidence evaluation, and also Pat Murphy, who acts as case manager. During an EVP session, we put people on all floors of the house, because as you're asking questions, you may get a response on another floor. Every investigation is different. As you're walking either upstairs or downstairs, you're thinking to yourself, what am I gonna find? What's gonna be there? What's in the darkness? Say your name. And I could feel that the energy was coalescing around that one area. And as I stepped closer to it, I realized this is more than just a well. It was deep and dark and foreboding. I think I see something. What? I'm not sure. Oh, something hit me in the chest. This dark energy, and it was overwhelming. I got the sense that there was a young child that wanted to tell its story. I felt her slip into my body. And I felt her touch my hair to see if it was her hair or mine. And then, with the sweetness of a child, she touched my cheek. I could feel her as trying to fill out my hands and my body. and having a sense of wonder. And then her voice came out. I'm Becky. Where's Mama? Mama got sick. sick. Took her away. 
the young slave girl's mother had been taken away to a doctor and never returned. She just was very desperate to know where her sick mother had gone. She's gone. I was channeling her grief over her mom. Imagine waiting centuries and never knowing if she'd return. What a horrible thing for a child to have to do. This well, this is no ordinary well. This is a portal. A portal is a door, a dimensional door. I could sense that this portal was where many spirits were coming and going, both good and bad. Is someone here? Meanwhile, Kurt and Patrick, unaware of what's happening in the cellar, are three stories above exploring the attic. Yeah, these are voodoo symbols. Are you all right? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I feel weird. It's just something that we don't see very often. It felt evil. It, it didn't feel right. Kurt. Kurt. What? Kurt. Patrick, you're freaking me out. A nearly 300-year-old house in Cromwell, Connecticut, has become a place of terror. A paranormal investigation team that includes a medium is starting to encounter a range of spirits. In the attic, case manager Pat Murphy believes lead investigator Kurt Knapp is in imminent danger. Kurt, Kurt. What? Kurt. When I saw Pat's face, you know, he's more of a tech guy than a spiritual guy. So for him to be alarmed about something is really unusual. Don't move. It was scary. My heart was racing. We finally realized that there's something very evil here, very dark. Back at the office, the paranormal investigators review their findings. They believe the house has sheltered lost souls for centuries. But when Ashley and her friends used voodoo to contact the spirits, they unleashed dark forces which rose up through the old well. I believe that whatever activity Ashley was engaged in in the house, whatever dark magic she was practicing, whatever she was trying to stir up. She was successful in that she opened a portal into another world that was bringing through not only human spirits, but also dark spirits. If there was any place that seemed like it went straight to hell, it would have been that well. Kurt and Karen arrived to present their findings to Mark, but they also have news that will change his life forever. Haven't you ever wondered why you were able to record so many voices from the afterlife? I've seen it on my own team, where two people in a room, one will get an EVP on the recorder and one won't. And I think it has more to do with the person's ability to tune in to the paranormal, to the supernatural, than anything else. What you have is a gift. I know. I have it too. Mark is an empath, able to connect with the spirit world. And suddenly, a lot of strange experiences make some kind of sense. The more I talk with Karen, the more light she shed on past episodes in my, of my life. There were signs early on that I had a spiritual sense. I used to sleepwalk quite a bit. My parents were always terrified for me. 
But there's a price to be paid for having such a rare ability. If Mark remains determined to stay in his family home, he'll have to get used to the presence of spirits, including those intent on harming him. I explained to Mark that psychically open people need to learn how to control that which they know is around them, but perhaps isn't good for them. We needed to give him tools to be able to cope with what was happening around him through exercise, through prayer, through meditation. It sort of put everything into context, and I had a better understanding of what was going on and what my role was. Take care. Call me if you need to, OK? Many questions remain unanswered, but one thing is known. The spirits are still inside. As the days go by, Mark tries to follow their advice. He devotes more time to reinforcing his faith. Don't antagonize, Mark. Don't engage. He concentrates on the physical aspects of his home. Mark senses he's not alone. I felt a very evil presence. Don't engage. A dark presence. Don't engage. I was upset. Don't antagonize. And I challenged it. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Whatever was in the house John. had consumed a lot of my life. <laughs> Taking a lot of my time. added a lot of stress and negativity. I was fed up. That was it. It was war for me. The battle was on. Firehouse! Firehouse! No! 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 I felt a push. Mark Corvo was being terrorized by evil spirits in his 18th century Connecticut home. They're determined to kill him. Leave me alone! No, no, no! Stay away from me! I felt the push. I was surprised I was alive. I should have been dead. Doctors told me that I had broken my back. After three weeks recovering in the hospital, Mark's sister Gina drives him home. Yeah, the battle rages on, as far as I'm concerned. Medium Karen Hollis realizes that letting his anger take control had been Mark's downfall. I think Mark came to understand that what he was doing was making the situation worse, and that what he needed to do was to focus on the positive through prayer, through meditation, and through exercise so that he could go on and free himself from what had been happening in his own home. You sure you're going to be OK? I'll be good. I'll be all right. This is something that he's always going to have to deal with his entire life 
being an empath is not something you can entirely shut off. But he has the tools now to learn how to live with it. He knows not to be a victim of it. He knows how to push away the spirits, how to say, not today. I'm not going to deal with this today. No matter where he goes or where he lives, he'll always be open to spiritual happenings. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Over time, Mark has learned how to stop the spirits from ruining his life. Cling to what is good. Hate what is evil. I think faith is a big part of what helps protect me. They thrive on fear. Hate what is evil. Hate what is evil. Hate what is evil. What seems to keep them at bay is forgiveness and love. They cannot tolerate that. My experiences Who are you? with these spirits or entities gave me an appreciation for how powerful they can be and the damage that they can inflict. Ashley was engaged in her own attempt to control the spirits, which were uncontrollable. Loud. Go! She lost, they won, she left. And that's the sad truth of it. I was being targeted. These spirits wanted to harm me. Peace is returned to Mark's home, although he knows that at any time, the battles with the spirits may begin again. I made a very important decision that the house was important to me. It's my family's house, and I wanted to stay there. I know now I have the tools to protect myself, and along with my faith, I know that I can keep on fighting. <laughs>